What is going on everybody? Welcome to the 13th financial charting tutorial. Where we left off, we were making a pretty nice looking candlestick chart. This was it. We've got the open, well, <laughs> we've got the uh, open and closed on our candlestick and we've got uh, volume data here. So if you guys are familiar with uh, candlestick charting, you'll notice probably immediately that we didn't, unless you were just like too enamored with my colors, you'll notice that we're missing something, right? We've got this line here, right, that's going through. We're missing the shadow of the open, high, low, close, basically. So we're missing the high and the low on this. So really, this candlestick chart's only showing like half the data, right? We're only showing two out of the four uh, data sets. So we definitely need to uh, fix that. Um, and there's a couple of different things that we can do. One, we could we can specify the color here, um, but n natively built into finance.py, um, I looked at their file, and it's literally hard-coded that this line is black. <laughs> so, so we have a couple of different options uh, for us. One is we could just change the background color of like this chart here to white, so the black would show up. But that's pretty lame because we'd have to move off the darked out chart, and as we all know, the darked out chart's really essential to making money and showing everyone that we're a badass. Part of the reason that the darked out charts are for badasses is because the noobs simply can't do it because the chart won't work. But luckily for you guys, I'm going to be here to teach you the way of the badass. Just kidding, but not really. Anyway, what we're going to have to do to do this is we're going to edit the uh, core finance.py file, and then within that, the, um, the candlestick function. Now, if you don't know what any of that means, that's okay. I'm going to hold your hand through the entire process. If you don't know what the heck you're doing, just take it slow and copy everything that I do. Um, but really, this kind of uh, method will help you in the future as well. Like if there's a function that either, one, you don't understand how it works, or two, you just, like, it's not doing what you want to do. Like what I did when I first saw this was like, oh, I wonder if there's like a parameter for us to fill in for a shadow, so I looked at the function, and no, like it's literally hard coded as a, as a K, which denotes black. And uh, so then I was like, well, okay, well, we'll just edit it in. So that's what we did, and that's what I'm going to show you guys how to do. So to do that, we're going to close out of here, and what you want to do is go to my computer, right? You know, so you got, or not my computer, but you know, your computer, so you, you know, where all your disks are. And um, wherever Python is installed for you, in my case it's in C, but yours might be in another drive, like I've got a bunch of other drives here with operating systems and stuff. So anyway, in mine it's C, for probably most of you guys it's in C, so let's pop into C. And then you're going to pop over to Python 27, then you should have a capital LIB. I don't know how many, I've, I've probably gone into this file like hundreds and hundreds of times. I still get these two mixed up. I'm like, hmm, which one do I click? But it's always the one that's proper, right? So anyway, capital L-I-B. And then down here, let's see, where's matplotlib? Am I just blind or what? Oh, no, wait, no, we go to site packages. Uh, and then matplotlib. And then now you're in matplotlib. So now what we want to do is scroll down till we get to finance. Here it is. Now you'll notice that there's a, a white one, and then there's these two black ones. Now the white one is the raw file. That's what we want to do. Now the black one is a compiled Python file. So when we edit this, it will go to the compiled finance. So you only need to edit the one white one. So hit edit. So now we're editing the finance.py file. Awesome. So this basically has all of the finance.py stuff. And as you'll see, actually very interestingly, finance.py does have a fetch historical Yahoo data. It's also got, um, it's, there's like some files in here too, and some kinds of interesting stuff. If you're interested in financial plotting, it will behoove you to just kind of scroll through this and see it, what they're doing. It's also got the second version of Candlestick, which I don't use. I'm not sure what the point of it is. Um, but yeah, there's a whole bunch of stuff, and they even have like volume overlay. That's pretty interesting. We, may, we might end up using volume overlay, actually. Um, it's kind of a waste, so you don't have to have volume on a separate chart right like we've got volume on a second subplot what you can do is overlay the volume on top of your current chart 
But part of the problem with that is sometimes it literally will lay over your financial data, which I don't really like. But there's probably a min and max setting that we can all figure out, and then we can just like include that in the tutorial. Um, that's like a real basic function. So the one I use is pretty intense. So um, maybe I could learn something from their function. Um, anyway, what we're looking for is candlestick. So just do like a control F, right? And you'll get uh, this little search thing. And just type in candlestick. Make sure it takes you to the regular candlestick, not candlestick two. So in, immediately when I look at this, I see, okay, we've got these parameters that will either be defined or are defined, right? Like these are definable and these are the default parameters, right? So, um, so we're not gonna touch this yet. But if you scroll down here, what we're looking for is, if you had no idea, right, where we're looking for shadow, like that's the first thing I looked for was shadow. That's not here. But the only thing that is here that sort of I see lines and we're appending some sort of V line, which I can only assume means vertical line. So that led, lead, well, well, should lead you here. And then you should see that color is K, which is black for, uh, for anybody that doesn't know what K is. And um, so then, uh, you know, you should be like, oh, well, that's our problem. So what if we just did white, W for white, and we just kind of move this over, and where is my other one? Let's see, I think this is it. Yeah. So now that we've changed that, let's run this and see if we got white. Sure enough, you should probably see it immediately that it's white, and then if we zoom in, oh, yeah, yeah, it's definitely white. So now we have our data back. But I'm not quite happy yet because, one, we just hard coded it just like they did. I'm actually surprised that they didn't give a parameter for it or do what I'm going to show you guys, but that's just the way it is. Um, but this isn't very good for a couple of reasons. One is it just looks ugly. Two, it looks ugly. And three, if you zoom out, it kind of like distorts it a little bit. It like lightens everything up. So, and it looks ugly. So that's not good. So what we want to do is, uh, we're done with this, edit our finance file a little bit more. And for that, I'm going to continue on in the next video. As always, thanks for watching. Thank you for your support, your subscriptions, and until next time.